thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, when you see these fantastic musicians, it's difficult to believe that they've had very, very tough childhoods. And what's more, they roam the world singing like this to raise money for other African children who perhaps have suffered famine or war, seen their parents killed in front of them. So it's very valuable work, and they are actually a choir created by a gentleman called, tell us his name. Daddy Ray. Daddy Ray, his real name is Ray Barnett, and he founded the charity Friends in the West that Robina works for. Tell us why he's called Daddy Ray. He's Daddy Ray because he's a dad to many children in all parts, in all parts of the world. He came to Uganda during the difficult times, during the war, and uh, he started helping children. He became a father to them. He gave them shelter education, and above all, love. And right now the choir is working particularly for the children in Rwanda who suffered so much in the recent war and for whom he's providing counselling and help. And it's thanks to people like these who've been singing all around the world. Tell us where you've been. Where have you been? Canada, Seattle, and Seychelles, and London, and other places. And which do you like best, do you know? Seychelles. Oh. <laughs> For a minute there, I hoped you'd say London, but I'd rather share your, your like the sunshine. You like the sunshine, do you, in the seaside? So tell me, does, does Daddy Ray really think you're at school today? Yes. So what's he going to say when he discovers you're here? Is he going to be cross? No. For sure. Because it's us he'll blame, of course. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll surprise him by hiding you just in this room back here. So shall we all... Shall we take the drums, too, because they're a bit of a giveaway? Otherwise, you'll see those. Shall we go back there? And you can watch what's going on, because there's a television in here. Well, that's not the only surprise we have for Ray tonight. I'd like to introduce this lady next to me, Isabel Lee. Now, how do you know Ray, Isabel? When he left his primary school in Coleraine over 40 years ago, he came to the Coleraine County Intermediate School. It was just opened at that time. It was the first county intermediate school that was opened in Northern Ireland. And I met Ray then. And what were you doing at the school? Well, I was a school librarian. And also I took some of the boys' music classes. Ah, oh, so you're to blame for all this. <laughs> have you seen him all that since I then? I haven't seen him since... I suppose he must have been two, three or four years with us. And since that, I haven't seen him at all. It's quite some time. I hadn't even known until quite recently all the things, the wonderful things he's been doing. Well, you must be very proud of him. Very. We know that Ray regards you as a major influence in his life, so much so that he talks about you frequently, and he's even mentioned you in his book as well. But he has changed a little bit <laughs> since his school days. So have I. <laughs> and Mickey has dreamt up yet another whopping fib to get him here. A very, very small fib. And this is the plan. Esther and the choir are behind there. Isabel is over there. And through here, we have a meeting place. Now, Ray is on his way here to meet a very distinguished film producer. And who could we get to play that distinguished film producer? Why, it must be me. Because he thinks that we're going to make a film to promote the work of the choir. He doesn't realise that we actually made the film, and he's going to see it sooner than he thinks. So I think Ray is about to arrive. So just before he does, I'm going to get myself into distinguished film producer's mode. OK, loves? <laughs> you want to take a seat for a minute? Susie. But do you want to come with me? I'll just see okay. if Mickey's around. Okay. And I'll introduce sure. you. Sure. Ah, Sally. Hello, Mickey. How are you? Ray. This is yes. Ray Barnett. Good to meet you. Thank you, Helen. Good to meet you. Sit, sit yourself down. Take a seat. Good to see you. I'm just going to check on something next door, Great. so I'll be back in a bit. Great. Very impressed with the tape, I heard. Very, very impressed. Oh, and, uh, thank you. It, it gives off a strong image straight away yes. of, the, of the work you've done. I just want to throw some ideas at you. I think we need a presenter. OK. What do, what do you feel about, about for making the video? That sounds like a great idea. Now, I've got a few names here. Um, we need somebody with the right image. And I've had various names thrown at me, but the one I'm quite keen on, and please shoot me down, because <laughs> yeah. when, somebody, when somebody first said this, I thought, is she still alive? Um, <laughs> um, Esther Ransom. Yeah, that would, be, that would be wonderful. So, should we try to give her a ring and see if we can get sure. her? Sure. If we can't get her, I've got a load of other numbers, so let's do it. I 
I'll put it on speakerphone, shall I? Yes, okay. I hope she's in. Hello? Hello, Esther. Mickey Hutton here. Oh, Mickey, hello. How I'm, are you? I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm sorry for calling you so late. I, I need a favour. Yeah. I've got, I've got a, a man here uh, who has got this fabulous choir. And we're, we're going to put the show together and we need... Uh, I'm sorry, Mickey. I, I know I used to sing, but... Um, no, <laughs> Esther, no, Esther, I don't want you to sing. I've heard you singing. You're terrible. Uh, <laughs> your singing days are long past. Uh, what I need is we need a presenter. We need somebody with a strong image, and uh, we wanted to know if you knew any. No, we wanted to know if you'd be interested. I'd say, uh, would you like to speak to him? He's, he's called Ray Barnett. I know Ray. Hello, Esther. Oh, have you met? Yes. yes we oh, have well... Indeed. I'll, I'll let Ray do, do the talking. Sorry, Ray, I didn't realise he'd met. Carry on. Hey, Ray, are you, you're not in Uganda then? No, I'm, I'm uh, right here um, in Wembley at the moment. Oh, in Wembley? Yes, and uh, 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 Mickey was just talking to me about uh, doing, um, doing a video with the um, African Children's Choir. You and want to make a video? Yes, and I have just got into the room, and he said, "You know, um, I'm very keen on this project, but we need a very, very strong presenter. W uh, what do you think about Esther Ranson?" I said, "That would be fantastic." Well, I'm so I'm surprised to be talking to you. <laughs> well, I'm, actually, I'm absolutely delighted you reacted that way because I'm a bit nearer than you think. I mean, Ray, I don't know if you'd mind just putting off the video for a second because we'd like you to join us on Hearts of Gold. It's 40 years since you met her. Do you know who this is? Um. This is Isabel Lee. Isabel Lee. Miss Lee, how are you? <laughs> Big changes in 40 Big years. Big changes in 40 <laughs> yes. years, yes. It's lovely to see you. So what do you think of your pupil? I'm pleased beyond words. It's just thrilling to meet him again and to know that all he has done. And, and I, I, I just pray that you will go on as you're doing do even more and more. I pray that you'll forgive me, Ray, because um, I know that you came here to get a video, didn't you? To get a video made. Yes, that's right. Well, that's rather, than, <laughs> rather than disappoint you, we have actually got a copy of a video here so that you shan't go away empty-handed. But we thought you might like to have a look at the film we made. These are the haunting images of the children of Africa, victims of decades of famine, war and disease. But it's an image Ray Barnett wanted to change. Eleven years ago, when he was working for human rights in Uganda, he learned of the horrors of the civil war there. I heard on the news that 150,000 Ugandan children were starving to death. And the prime minister of the day said, look, we have thousands and thousands of orphans. Can you do something to help them? And I just pointed out, look, if we could do something a little bit more to project a positive image of the, the child in Africa, show how beautiful they are, how articulate, how bright, how beautiful, then maybe people could be, could focus in on, on, on helping Ugandan children. They were born and they were grown up and they didn't know anything every night but gunfire. And I thought if they could get out of that and get abroad, they wouldn't feel that everything had to be war. In the middle of all this persecution, you had a, a joyful and a triumphant people. And I think that that's how I see the African children. So he created his choir to tour the world as diplomats and fundraisers. But there were problems. To get passports, to get visas for foreign countries, and children having medical exams and all of that, it seemed like a horrendous task. But I thought it was the right, the right thing to do. So in the last 10 years, Ray's choirs brought joy and inspiration wherever they've travelled. So far, two and a half million pounds have been raised, and the charity now has 5,000 children in full-time care across Africa, helping orphans like these in Sudan. These were 
little boys that tried to escape as the village was burning and eventually village after village they became a human river of boys trying to get out and of course it did not occur to me to say no we couldn't help all our team back home was saying well ray where are we going to get the money to help these uh, uh, children and my feeling is you help one step at a time that community of three and a half thousand children is now safe thanks to ray and his team where other people might be daunted ray finds a way through astonishing even his colleagues i've been like right in the middle of war and i know what it means and uh, the several times he has just moved in like the war is still going on and he says we have to go now i mean he goes it, it, he, it, doesn't, he doesn't care whether it, it costs his whole life, but he goes right there and, because he wants to help. Ray has special reasons for caring so much. He can identify with the children in Africa because of his own experience growing up in Coleraine in Northern Ireland. I was abandoned as a child and uh, taken in by, by a family. Um, in, in, in Coleraine, and I grew up in that family. There's an empathy there, and so many of these children have been abandoned as babies. They don't know who their parents are. Others, of course, it's simply been a fact that their parents have been killed, or some of them don't know what have happened to their parents. But I see, uh, I got a chance, and I became inspired and motivated, and I thought the same, these children deserve the same, the same type of chance. The choir are currently raising money to help children in Rwanda, where more than 150,000 have been orphaned or separated from their parents. We went to look at one place that would hold 80 children. There was 500 orphans waiting outside to see if they would be one of the children selected. And I noticed uh, one of our workers pointed out a little boy about 10 that looked very vacant, starry-eyed, obviously traumatized. And she said, look at his arms around those children, must be the brothers and sisters. So I asked the interpreter, tell me, you know, about this little boy, what is the story? And she said, well, um, this little boy and those brothers and sisters that he's got his arm around were with their parents in the church when the government soldiers came along and killed them all. And that he was on the, the, the floor with his arms around the brothers and sisters. The parents were killed, a lot of dead bodies on top. Few, several hours later, when some people came to look at the carnage, they found these children still alive in a shocked state. And, you know, when I heard that, I thought, my, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could help that whole family? I, I just saw it as that family. That little boy with his brother and sister surely is damaged beyond repair. Well, you know, we have seen children like that in our own program in Uganda. And with love, with uh, encouragement, with music, and being surrounded by a support system, we have seen them totally come back and uh, become absolutely uh, not only normal, but I would say in, in, in top form. 14-year-old Charles was one of those children. He came to Ray's orphanage when he was five years old. He was suffering from malaria and he was close to death. His mother had already died from the disease and his father had been killed by soldiers in Uganda. He was barely crawling around. He was badly malnourished and whatever treatment he'd, he'd been through, uh, he didn't really speak at all. So he just sat in a corner when he first came to the home and gradually he would hear the singing and the workers would try and speak to him and encourage him every day. If you gave him food to eat, he could eat and eat and eat and eat. So you had to tell him that this is enough for you. So you had to, uh, to keep food away from him. You know, you had to, you had to look after him um, all the time. But if you look at him now, he's, he's a different man. He's, he's a real man now. How do you feel when you see that? Uh, I think it brings tears to my eyes. Now when I see them as teenagers, 
when I was discouraged about the numbers of children to be helped and, you know, was ready to give up, I, I received a letter from a lady and she wrote, Dear Ray, you know how to move a mountain one shovel full at a time. And I thought, that's it. We'll help one child at a time. I've been to Africa and I've seen some of these children now who are teenagers, who are starting university, and they are the future leadership of the country. Our whole thing is to inspire the child and to encourage them and to um, encourage them to dream what they want to become and to see themselves uh, becoming that, that person of their dreams. Before every concert performance, the children sing their prayers. Ladies and gentlemen, the African Children's Choir. I get a lot of joy, I get a lot of satisfaction, and I can go to sleep at night knowing that I have done absolutely everything I know how to do to help underprivileged children. So what did you think looking at that film? Well, um, this whole thing is an astonishment to me. When I was in that room, I had no idea that that was going to turn and that you were actually here. <laughs> <laughs> and you had no idea that I was interviewing you for this program? No, absolutely not. So I'm still trying to recover. It's absolutely wonderful. How would you feel if somebody had sort of dragged your choir out of their school in Uganda? Would you think that was a pretty awful thing to do? Well, I know that is pretty impossible. <laughs> I, know, I know. But we were very pleased to do it tonight, Ray, because they are actually here, because they want to give you no. a hard and go. be cross that they weren't in school. Oh. <laughs> what can I say? How wonderful. Are you pleased to see them? Oh, my, yes. I didn't think there could be any more surprises this evening. <laughs> Nothing can top this. Wow. What do you think when you see them standing there? Well, I am one very proud parent. Listen, you lot, can I ask you a question? Who do you think should have a heart of gold? Daddy Ray! Daddy Ray, this is, is from all the children in, in Africa. but particularly Ray Barnett because the choir have been rehearsing a very special song for him. It's From a Distance by the African Children's Choir.
That's all for tonight. Thank you, Ray Barnett. Thank you, the African Children's Choir. We wish you every success raising money for Rwandan children. We'll be back again next week with another Hearts of Gold. Till then, from us all, good night. Good night. Good night.